In this video, we will go through the steps to complete calibration with a Nexus. We will look at video calibration setup for reference video cameras, masking, dynamic calibration, and setting the volume origin. Towards the end of the video, we will highlight how to go about a static video calibration for non-Vicon supported reference video cameras, as well as how to manage your calibration. The video assumes you have already aimed and focused your Vicon hardware. If this is not the case, and you need assistance with this process, please refer to our Vicon hardware setup videos in the description. Another note before we begin, calibration is often completed with the local Vicon system capture frequency set to 100 Hz. If your lab is capturing data at a much higher frequency, please contact Vicon support for additional information to optimize your calibration process. Within Nexus, navigate to the Tools pane System Preparation button. If you are utilizing a View camera, Bonita Video, or Bosler camera, as well as have an active wand, you will begin with the video calibration setup. This button is used to help with the calibration of your reference video cameras. Please make sure that you have configured the reference video cameras within the Resources pane Systems tab. Also confirm that the cameras are aimed and focused on your capture volume. The Video Calibration Setup button confirms that your reference video camera will pick up the active wand markers during the calibration process. Set your active wand out in the volume. It is easier for the camera to view if it is propped up in a chair or held facing the camera. Make sure you are looking at a camera view of the reference video camera. In this video, I am using a view. Select Activate if you have not already saved your current system configuration, you will be prompted to do so. The camera view will change from an RGB video to one with red as the primary color. Zoom in on the wand and see if the LEDs are circle fitting. If they are not, deactivate this mode and confirm that this camera is in focus. If the camera is in focus but the markers are not circle fitting, you can make slight changes to the threshold and minimum circularity ratio. For these properties, any changes made after you click Activate only apply to the calibration system file. These properties revert to their live capture settings after you select Deactivate. We want the camera to circle fit in this mode as it will be used during the calibration process, including the dynamic wand wave and when we set the origin. Once the markers are circle fitting, as you see here, select Deactivate. Now we have mask cameras. Looking at the properties, you will see that you can mask all or selected cameras. If you have selected set, you will need to select your cameras from the Resources pane Systems tab. Masking enables grayscale blobs generated from reflections of objects other than markers such as reflections from floor or furniture or opposing camera strobe rings to be ignored by the Vicon cameras. In capture volumes where the spurious noise is present, camera masking improves calibration robustness and reconstruction quality. In Nexus, masking is shown as a grid of small blue tiles superimposed over the camera image in a camera view each cell of which can be set to obscure unwanted reflections that are seen by a camera. Please note that masking should be minimized if possible, as masking blocks out portions of the camera's sensor for the remainder of capturing, so a marker will never be seen in this section. Vicon Nexus offers both automatic masking and tools for manual masking. If you have many reflections in your capture volume, it is a good idea to create camera masks automatically first. You can then eliminate any remaining reflections by creating masks manually. 
To begin auto masking, select Start. In this case, we are set to Cameras to Mask All, so all cameras will be displayed in the camera view. Any masks which were previously present are removed from the camera views, and then new masks are applied as required in each camera view. When you no longer see any stray reflections, select Stop. If you would like to manually mask your cameras, you can utilize the three icons on the top of the camera view. Here you will see a paintbrush. This allows you to paint on masks. An eraser, where you can erase masks as needed from the camera view. On the right is an X. This button will clear all masks from the selected camera or cameras. When you're ready to exit the manual masking mode, please select the same icon that is highlighted gray. The Aim Cameras function is best utilized when initially setting up your system. Please refer to our tutorial video on the Aim Camera tool for further details on this process. In the Calibrate Camera section, let us show Advanced. Here we can confirm the proper wand is selected. Typically, the calibration type will be set to full calibration. Calibration refinement provides a fast, reliable way to fine tune an existing camera calibration. For example, let's say, since this morning's full calibration, environmental factors may have caused small changes to the camera's positions and it is necessary to recalibrate them accurately and quickly. You can choose to calibrate all or selected cameras. Typically, this will be set to all unless you're utilizing reference video cameras outside of the cameras mentioned earlier. Refinement frames specify how many times each optical camera needs to see the wand in order to calibrate. This value will be dependent on the lab. You want to be able to comfortably cover your capture volume with wand waves without feeling like you were rushed to cover the space or there waving the wand for ages. In this lab space, 1500 frames gives me enough time to cover my entire capture volume comfortably. If you are using a Vicon issued wand, you can leave the tolerance values as is. If you have created your own calibration device or see defects in your wand's alignment, please reach out to support. Like your refinement frames, DV calibration frames is the number of frames required for the reference videos to see the calibration wand. This value is typically lower as the reference video cameras do not contribute to the marker reconstructions. Lastly, with auto stop ticked on, Nexus will automatically stop calibration as soon as the last camera has finished collecting frames to use for the calibration. Let us go ahead and start the dynamic calibration by selecting Start. Within Nexus, notice the rainbows populating within each camera view, as well as the triangles on the bottom right of the images. The rainbows show us which part of the sensor has been covered with wand waves. The triangle is an indicator as to whether a camera needs more frames. Once a camera hits its 1500th frame, the triangle disappears. The individual also receive feedback from cameras depending on which camera type is set up in the lab. Once the dynamic wand wave is complete, you will notice information updating and changing within the calibration feedback section. This area reports several values to help provide feedback on the dynamic wand wave. Starting with the left-hand column, the cameras are listed. Next, you'll see how many times each camera saw the wand. Please note that the cameras continue to collect frames even after the 1500th frame was achieved. This will continue until the last camera hits the required refinement frame value. The last two columns report a world error and an image error. The world error displays the camera error in millimeters. 
the world error is calculated per camera from the image error in pixels and the distance of the camera to the center of the volume. Cameras further away with the same image error display a larger world error. Values for this column should be less than one. Image error is the RMS distance in camera pixels and indicates the accuracy of the 3D reconstruction of the markers. This value represents the difference between the 2D image of each marker on the camera sensor and the 3D reconstructions of those markers projected back to the camera sensor. Acceptable values depend on factors such as size of the capture volume and the camera lens type. As you continue to calibrate your lab setup, you'll see these columns trend towards certain values. Now that the dynamic calibration has been completed, please change from a camera view to a 3D perspective. Note how the cameras are calibrated with one another, but they don't know where the lab origin is. Go to Set Volume Origin and Show Advanced. If utilizing a calibration wand, like in this example, please select the appropriate wand. Place the wand at the origin and turn it on. Observe the level to confirm the wand is level. If not, adjust the legs on the bottom. Within the 3D perspective, observe the wand floating in the air. When we select Start, you'll notice that the calibration wand is recognized as an object and is labeled in a kinematic fit. We will now select Set. Nexus now sets the global origin and axes to correspond to the position and orientation of the calibration object in the capture volume. In the 3D perspective view, the floor grid is aligned with the capture volume floor and the cameras are distributed in the position and orientation in which the physical cameras are located. In labs where subjects will traverse the entire lab, it is also useful to set the floor plane. This will account for any unlevel settings on the wand or any sloping of the floor. To demonstrate this, markers are placed throughout the volume. Auto-detect will automatically select the markers you place throughout the space and set the floor plane based on those selected markers. If you had a marker with a vertical offset, such as on a step or table, Nexus would not select this marker as it, as it is an outlier for the floor plane we are setting. To manually select markers, select Start you will then select the markers to use for the floor plane and then set to configure the floor plane. Please note you will want to account for the vertical offset of your markers. Set floor plane will position the plane at the center of your marker otherwise. Within the offset section, tick it on and in the case of a 14 millimeter marker like we are using today, set an offset of negative nine millimeters. This accounts for the thickness of the plastic base as well as the radius of the marker. There are other ways to go about setting your volume origin. One marker will enable you to relocate the origin of your lab. You will still want to go ahead and set your volume origin. You can then use this feature to relocate the lab's origin. The three marker calibration enables users to set three markers in their volume and use these markers to set the lab axes and origin. This is typically utilized for labs that have force plate integrated treadmills. The first marker is selected as the origin. The second marker is used to define the primary axes, while the third is used for the secondary axes. In both features, make sure that you are utilizing the offset if needed. Again, if offset is not utilized for these methods as well as set floor plane, the plane will be placed in the middle of the markers used for the volume origin. 
Static video calibration is a function used for camcorders and other reference video cameras in instances where the camera cannot detect the active wand or the lab does not have access to an active wand. This area is used after the lab has been fully calibrated. The passive wand will remain at the origin and you will select the reference video camera. Go from a 3D perspective to a camera view. Select Start, and then select all five markers on your passive wand. This will roughly place the reference video camera within the 3D perspective. Please note that the reference video camera will not display accurate 3D marker overlays with this type of calibration. This example utilized a view camera just to serve as an example. This is not how you would go about calibrating a view camera. Last, we have Manage Camera Calibration. With this section, you can reorder your cameras based on their location within the capture volume. Automatic numbering starts with the camera that is furthest from the volume origin. The cameras are then numbered in a clockwise direction around the volume. If your cameras are positioned on different levels, the cameras in the level that contains the most cameras are numbered first. During camera calibration, Vicon Nexus creates a calibration parameters file, otherwise known as an XCP file. When you change the currently loaded XCP file, either by calibrating the cameras or setting the global coordinate system, Nexus stores the calibration state before the change. This enables you to load a different calibration at any time while using Nexus. For example, you might want to load a different calibration when you connect your system to a different Vicon Nexus PC. Reset removes all non-existing cameras and clears the calibrated positions for existing cameras. This enables you to recalibrate the system from a clean starting point. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com.